What's up guys, Ryan with the MXG channel back today with another e-bike to show you guys. I've showed you several e-bikes already. I've showed you fast ones, slow ones, 1500 watts, 750 watts, hub drives, center drives. I've showed you a few different options, but I haven't showed you one like this. This is the Nacto Ox. And what makes this one so special is that it folds up. And I've been intrigued by these for months now. I've been wanting to get my hands on one. And that's a good segue into starting off with, with why would you want a bike that folds? Well guys, if you watched this channel before, you know I'm a motorcycle person. I have trucks, right? What I don't have is a lot of gas money. So my daily driver is not a truck, it's a car. And yeah, I have a bike rack for my car. Uh, most people that have bicycles do, but let's be honest, it's just a little more involved, a little more of a pain, and it sticks out like a sore thumb to get stolen, depending on your location. So if you're able to throw your bicycle in the trunk of your car or the back of your SUV or whatever without using a bike rack, without using straps, by just folding it up, that's just a major plus. Um, that's a convenience that is important to a lot of people. and. This is the bike that meets that need. Now stick to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a couple very cool features of this bike, but let's start out with just a generalization. What is this bike? It's a small form factor comfort cruiser that has smaller wheels, so it fits with the fold up form factor, easier to get in and out of the car, but the tires on this bike are still wide. That means they're still gonna do great over sand, ice, gravel stuff like that it's got a wide comfort seat with tall bars so you're going to have a really comfortable seating position also you've got fender fenders on the front and back and you've got a carrying rack it's just all logic with this thing guys guys yeah, let's talk about the motor and battery behind this thing it's a 500 watt rear hub drive and that doesn't sound super powerful but you have to remember is these wheels are smaller so this thing feels a little more zippy than a 500 watt in a full size mountain bike wheel. As far as the battery, you're getting a 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery. It's not gonna take you around the world, but for most people's purposes, you're gonna be just fine. You're gonna get at least 20 miles out of this battery. Now for the elephant in the room, the first time when I saw this seat and battery set up, I thought, man, this is gonna be a pain in the butt. I'm gonna have to raise the seat up every time I wanna remove the battery. Not the case, guys. Nacto's got you covered. You're gonna hit this lever on the back of the seat, seat flips up, battery's got a big sturdy handle on it, and you're just gonna lift up and it's gonna come right out. It's got a rail system on the back, which can also lock in into place. You put it right back down in there, and you're good to go. It's a really cool design. You're gonna get a six speed Shimano setup for this bike, and you're gonna get cable actuated disc brakes, which it's entry level stuff, but it's all you need for the purpose of what this machine is. All right, now let's talk about the controls up here on the bars real quick. I told you it's a Shimano six speed. It's got a very easy shift mechanism here. Uh, it's got good grips, they're lock-ons, and they have the palm rest. Now the rubber actually feels pretty good on these. It's grippy, doesn't feel plasticky. Uh, it comes with the uh, thumb throttle. Now I prefer the twist, uh, but if you're not a motorcycle guy, most people feel a little more comfortable intuitive with the thumb over here got your other brake you've got your horn the horn does not inspire confidence but it gets the job done let's listen now there's a display over here that i haven't seen before on another e-bike and i do like how the buttons are laid out it's very easy to use it's not the brightest display in the world but i can see it glancing down even on a sunny day uh, pretty easy. You've got a button here to turn your light on and off. We'll show you the light in a second. Speeds up and down and your power off right there. I was actually pleasantly surprised at the capabilities of these little forks. Not a ton of travel, but they do soak up. I wheelied over a couple things. They do everything this thing's going to need to do. And all there's, although there's no shock on the back, you do have some kind of shock absorbers under this seat right here, which do help a lot. Plus, it's super soft and cushy. Guys, I'm gonna show you how to fold this bike up. Now realize that it may take some practice before you can do this gracefully, but you'll get it down. So you've got a clamp down here on the bottom, similar to your seat clamp. You're gonna release that, you're gonna move this over. And before you do this though, I wanna show you this really cool feature with these pedals. See these pedals, big plastic platforms right here. You're gonna push in on those pedals 
and they're gonna flip up just like that. And that's gonna give you more room to fold this bike. So after we remove our latch, we're just gonna gently pull up on it and then the whole bike's gonna begin to fold. And you can see, you get a much smaller footprint. One person can easily lift this, put it in the back of a trunk, a hatch, whatever you need. Now one thing I do like is this spring-loaded design right here so that if you put this over here and you forget to latch it or it, it comes unlatched somehow, the bike's not going to fold on you. It has to be pulled up before the bike can fold, so I like that safety feature. Okay, are you guys ready to go for a test ride so I can show you how the power works on this thing? Alright guys, now before we start this test ride, I want to explain to you how the power system works on this. You've got five different power levels up and down right here you can see on your screen that's all the way now one thing i've noticed that seems to be different on different brands of e-bikes on some e-bikes you know this is your pedal assist level right here okay and on some e-bikes the throttle seems to override whatever that pedal assist level is so you can set your pedal assist level and you can override it with a throttle and go as fast as you want on this bike that doesn't seem to be the case and i really like that so if you set your pedal assist level right there the bike's only going to go as fast as it can max out at at pedal assist one it's not going to max the speed out if you actually want to go faster even with the throttle you're going to have to max out this pedal assist all right so let's see how fast this bike will go um, in every assist level <clears throat> All right, just a reminder, if you're not familiar with these, even though I'm using the throttle, this is the same speed the bike's gonna max out on when you're pedaling at that same, at that pedal assist level. So, we're in pedal assist one, I'm at full throttle, and we're right at about nine miles an hour. Doesn't seem like we're gonna get quite, uh, we barely touch 10 on pedal assist one. So let's go up to pedal assist two. We are going slightly uphill now but we're at about 11 miles an hour. Bump it to three. Pedal assist three, we're at 12 and a half. We're bumped to four now. Four, we're at about 13 and a half or 14 miles an hour. Pedal it now when you when you bump it to power level five, you can really feel it take off. We're going uphill and we're at almost 19 miles an hour. Twenty and a half. All right, so we actually touched 21 miles an hour. Now let me tell you what I like about this. I've tested a lot of other e-bikes that don't have a very linear power assist level. So what I mean is maybe level one is too fast um, already, or maybe level one's okay, but there's not much difference. Um, you go from level one to level three, and then there seems to be almost no difference from level three, four, and five. This one is not the case. Um, 
really where you want to find where you want your power to be very tunable is at low speeds um, because that just makes the, the biggest difference and then you can have jumps for max power at high speed and that's how this thing operates so you could be, you'll be able to ride this stuff in town and very fine tunable adjust your power assist level whether you want to go eight miles an hour 10 miles an hour 12 miles an hour that actually that doesn't sound like a lot of difference but when you're in town different sidewalks different community settings that actually makes a very big difference so i really like the way this power is up on this nacto ox let's go out one more time max power and just see what we top out at i'm guessing it's gonna be around 21 we may hit 22 on a slight downhill right here Yep, 22 right there, 22 and a half. Now I'd also like to let you guys know I'm five foot 11, 215 pounds. So you might get substantially more speed out of this. If you're a regular sized person, you might get 25, 26 miles an hour out of this machine. I also like how quiet it is. The tires, even though they're fat tires, they don't sing very loud on the road. It's a stable ride. You can see I can do it with one hand, no problem. Still comfortable, quiet, and smooth. At the end of these videos, I usually like to hit on my favorite aspects of each one of these e-bikes and hit on a few things I think they can improve on tell you who the bike is best suited for in my opinion and then tell you how you can get your hands on one. So what are some of my favorite aspects of the Nacto Ox? The main one's got to be the accessibility guys. The fact that it's not only a folding bike but it's a step through folding bike means that uh, just about anybody can enjoy this thing. It can be transported in just about any kind of vehicle which is awesome. It's got this small form factor, which not only makes it feel a little peppier and less intimidating, but just makes things easier on you. It's got a super comfortable seat with a super cool mechanism for getting to the battery. And it's got these really cool pegs that fold up and go out of the way. Now you guys know I have to be nitpicky and try to find a few things I'd love to see improved on a bike like this. And I can. I would love to see better brakes. These work, but they're not gonna lock up really well, especially with somebody my size on them. The screen, that could definitely be brighter for the daytime. And I would love to see a twist throttle on this instead of a thumb, but that's really comes down to personal preference. So who do I think this bike is most perfectly suited for? Well, I think, I wanna start by saying I think anybody can enjoy it but it's gonna be most perfectly suited for um, someone with a small SUV that can easily set a bike in their trunk um, and don't wanna bother with a bike rack. It's gonna be suited for, for the older generation that need a step through frame, but also need a folding bike like that. Uh, it's maybe somebody shorter. This seat sets really low, so even somebody really short will be able to touch the ground, won't feel intimidated. Uh, also, this is going to be great for somebody at the campground that might not be on concrete all the time. Maybe they're on some loose dirt, um, maybe they're on some sand, some gravel. These wider tires are going to be perfect like that. So when I think of the perfect customer for this one, I think of, you know, uh, an older person at a campground or something like that is going to love this thing. But like I said, guys, the possibilities are endless. Probably the best thing about this bike is the price you can pick these up for $11.99 guys and Nacto has a one-year warranty on all their e-bikes all right YouTube I hope you enjoyed going over the Nacto folding step through 500 watt e-bike with me today I will put the link down below first link in the description if you'd like to take a closer look at this and Ryan with the MXG channel see you in the next video